Hello Gophers and welcome back to part 3 of our series about how to create REST APIs using GIN framework. In this video we will be learning about how to configure middlewares in your REST APIs that you create using GIN framework. Before we move forward please do not forget to like share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any notifications on any new videos that we put forward. So now let's start by understanding how we can configure middlewares in Go using GIN framework. Now before we start configuring any middlewares, first under let's understand what is a middleware. A middleware is nothing but a function that gets executed just before any of your request handler functions. Now you may have multiple middlewares that you create and you wish to configure multiple middlewares in your request. So there can be scenarios where you want to configure one as authentication or authorization middleware which is actually checking if the user has access to your API endpoints. Other one being a uh, logger middleware which is actually logging all your request and response and then you get executed your actual request handler for your API. Now let's start configuring a middleware in our previous example where we created one API with version 1 uh, that was one group of version 1 API and it contained two different set of groups that was product and user and product had one API and user had two APIs of type get. Now let's configure one middleware for all these APIs that belong to a group version 1. So I have created a group that is version 1. Now with the va variable that we get out from the group function so we'll use that and with that function uh, with that uh, variable we'll be using the use function in that and it expects a list or a variomatic list of functions that you want to execute now over here we have just created one function and these functions are specifically middlewares that you are configuring and these middlewares that you are configuring would only be applicable to version 1 of your API. Now if I create one more group let's say v2 and uh, that v2 is not coming under v1 so that means that v or any API that is falling under the v2 group will not have this middleware executed anytime. So we need to make uh, a, a very conscious decision in placing our middlewares in which actual group or actual API do we want to use it. So over here I have used this middleware for all APIs lying under the v1 v1 group. So this use function is expecting a function which is uh, expecting a parameter of type context. Now what Go will do is the functions that we supply over here it will execute those all functions by supplying the context object to it. Now from the context I have tried to access a particular header now this can be anything that you want so this can be a algorithm that you designed to authenticate or anything that you wish. Now over here I have tried to access a header now after accessing the header if the header value is not there I have aborted the request with this function and passing the status as unauthorized and in the message in the body of the response I have sent message as no token and returned from here. Now this return is a plain return that means the next function to this or next middleware or next handler function will not get executed. Okay. Now if I had header received and the value is not ABC now this is a hard coded value that I am expecting right now but this will depend like you may wish to use JWT authentication or anything that you want so you can apply logic accordingly. Now over here again if the value is not equal to ABC I have sent a status unauthorized mentioning that invalid token. If all goes well I am setting a keys object to, uh, to initializing that first. Now this keys object is something that is given in GIN framework in the request uh, requ uh, request context. So this value that you set over here in the first middleware will be will be available in the next middlewares as well or the request handler as well. So over here I have just set the context token that or the 
authentication header that I have received into user key as a user key and executed the next function. Now next function can be a middleware or the handler function. Now in our case it is an handler function for the API. Now if the API is called that belongs to product group then I have I have said that in the response you said the uh, you also send me the the value that was set in the key object uh, in the key for the user so this so that I know that if that is successfully set and then group user contains the same old API that we configured in the word in the part 2 of this tutorial so if you have not gone through how we can group the API's so go ahead and click on the i icon on the top and go and watch the video so that you have a little context of what we are talking about uh, in grouping the APIs. Now let's go ahead and run this. Now that our APIs are running let's go ahead and hit the postman. Now for the first case I will remove the authentication header from my request and let's check if the product API gives me a success status or not. So once I hit the product API it gives me an unauthorized status for the API mentioning that no token was sent. I am sending the authorization header with a random value which is not equal to ABC definitely. So it is giving me invalid token and again the the status would be unauthorized as configured in the API. Now let's try giving the valid API token and let's see. So if you see I have got the product list that was sending being sent from the API and also got the username as well. So this username was actually the value that is set over here. Now this can be something that you wish to configure on your own and that's completely on you. So if you see over here I have not written any complex logic to get the value from the header and setting it. I have just used the the keys list of keys that uh, is being set in the context. Now I know that every middle every time I create this middleware and my next function is getting executed I know definitely that this key would be set at that moment. That's the last step just before running the next. So I am very sure that this would exist. But in case you have different logic as well, so you can write code according to that as well. So in the next coming video, we'll be learning about how to bind data from your requests into one model. So it can be a case where you want to bind data from your uh, post post request body, or you want to bind data from your query string parameters or you want to bind the data from your uh, request parameters which is like this. So how do you do that model binding and get the values from the request parameters. Thank you for watching the video. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also press the bell icon so that you don't miss on any new notifications. Also do comment us below on any feedbacks or any new tutorials that you want us to do.